What's going on guys? So today we're going to start introducing some player movement to our text adventure game. Uh, if you're a little confused as to where I am, you can go back to my previous video, which I have linked in the description, and that's how we got to this point. But today we're going to implement some nicer graphics because currently, let's just run this, everything's just printed in this board right here in the terminal. Um, and it's pretty gross looking. So we're gonna implement some graphics and we're gonna implement some player movement. So this player character, you're gonna be able to move him with your WASD keys by the end of this video. So let's get into things. So first off, I'm gonna start by introducing some of the graphics and this may be a little confusing, um, but I will explain this um, as we go or after I finish sort of typing it. So this is just importing TK enter. Um, which is a, a module that basically can create GUIs or GUIs, which are graphical interfaces, which we're gonna use to create the graphics for this game. Um, and it's still gonna be text-based in the graphics part. So that part is still true. What? So right here, we're gonna introduce this and we're gonna create something called label text, which we're gonna set to nothing or just an empty string right now. And then we're also going to create right here, just root equals to TK. <coughs> and this is like confusing, like what is root? What is TK? Uh, basically root is just whatever name I could name this A, I could name this B. I'm just naming it root because that's just like the base, the base file and TK, this just creates, it calls TK from TK enter and creates like a screen uh, for us. And then so I, if I, I believe we could just run this right now. And so you have to actually install TK enter. So you can just type this command pip install TK and it'll do that for you. Okay, so I'm a fool. You're supposed to type from, from TK enter import this. So you're basically saying from this package TK enter, you wanna import everything. Um, and so now if I run this, it's gonna create us uh, a nice little screen. And this screen is what we're gonna be drawing our board on. So now, and this label text is basically what our text is gonna be. It's gonna be this text right here. So now that we have that, we can start off by just creating my label. And this is gonna be our label. That's gonna be all of our, all of our text for the board. Let's think of our board as like a, a 10 or eight by 16 row of asterisks and the player character and eventually maybe some enemies, some loot, whatever. It's gonna be a bunch, it's just a long string. That's what it is. So <coughs> we're gonna set this equal to label and then you have to do root because root is just what it's, what, what are you putting this label on? You're putting it on root. And then your text originally, right, or right now we're just gonna start off, let's say our text is high. And then our font equals to, and let's just pick Arial because why not? Uh, and let's see what 50 would look like. Um, and that's our, that's our font size. And that should be back here. Okay, have an extra parentheses. So now, once we have this label, there's a couple of steps. Basically we create the label and then once we've created the label, we have to pack the label or we have to push the label onto our screen. So we have our screen root and then we've created this label, but nothing's telling the program to put the actual label onto the screen. To put the label onto the screen, we use this command, mylabel.pack. That basically just prints it up on the screen. So if I run this now, let's see. It just say hi. <coughs> and so I guess you guys can probably see where I'm going with this. Eventually, this high text is going to be replaced completely with our asterisks and player and whatever, or our entire game board. So this function here, which we created last time, I'm going to change this name to print board because I think that's a more fitting name. And that means we're going to have to change the name down here as well. Print board. And we're also going to call that name Let's, let's see, let's move this stuff. 
down here because we're defining print word so let's let's call this all the way down here and the user start stuff we don't really need that because we can make that graphic wise so let's just get rid of that we're gonna make something way cooler i promise so after we create this original label we want to call print board so we want to update the board so it's actually a board with asterisks with a player and in this print board we've got to now change it because right now it's it's like all wonky right you know it doesn't actually do any of this label stuff so what we got to do is we've got to create a string that we're going to put in text here and we're going to use this command my label so the name of our label dot config and then text equals to basically you know like asterisks player whatever so this command we're going to use at some point after we figured out what our string is going to be and that's what label text is label text is going to be the text that we actually put in our label after we print the board it's going to add all this asterisks and stuff into the label text and then we're going to update this label on the screen with the text so we end up having the board that we want so in here instead of printing p we're going to add p to label text and instead of printing an asterisk we're going to add that to label text and again label text is just the variable which is a string and that strings basically the characters that we put into the board And now, at the end of the line, this print statement was basically a new line. If you scroll up, right, how do we go from this line to the next line? Well, we have this, which creates a new line. So instead, we're going to take label text, and we're going to add this. It's a special character in Python, and it tells Python we want to add a new line. So because we have stuff in a uh, function here, <coughs> we either have to pass a variable into the function, or we have to make the variable global and global basically means it's like it has a scope or, or like it, it transcends these functions because usually if you create a variable inside this function like a equals three and you create a variable a equals three out here or a equals two out here if you print a inside the function it would print three but if you print a outside the function it prints two there's different like levels to variables so we could actually just sort of create label text in here as that. Um, so then that should get rid of this issue. Hmm. Now we're back after I figured out what I'm doing. So the issue is we need to create this thing called root.mainloop, which essentially just constantly updates our, our screen like the root screen or the TK screen, this main loop just like continually updates it. So like when you have a, an animation of something and it's moving and it's like basically a ton of different pictures and it changes the pictures and it creates an animation, it's the screen updating a bunch, a bunch of times. And so that's what main loop does. It sort of updates our screen. And so we need that if we're gonna keep updating it, like when the character moves. So now that we have the board working, right here right we're like why isn't it actually printing the asterisks i thought we just fixed the print board method well we have to actually put in my label dot config which just updates the text and instead of putting in this string we're going to put it we're going to put in label text because you know that's what we just created to be the board and in here let's call this after we finish all the for loops so after label text is perfect exactly what we want it's going to call this guy hopefully perfect so look at that that's our board so let's make this board look a little nicer so let's add a space after all these asterisks and here we have it this is our character um but he can't really move around or anything so let's implement that so it's actually super easy we can do this thing called dot bind in tk so root again which is the name of our board we could name it anything i could name it b i could name it tree i could name it dog right but because it's named root we're doing root dot bind 
And I'm just voicing this over uh, while editing the video because I thought my explanation wasn't the best. Basically, bind just adds a key listener, and when you press that key, it calls a function. So when you press W, it calls the function up. Let's create this, right? We're gonna, we're gonna have we're gonna have left, we're gonna have right, and we're gonna have down, down, right. Uh, yeah, okay, that's backwards. Left, right. There you go. Uh, and we're getting errors because we haven't actually defined what any of these functions are. So up is going to be. Um, and then also just little silly thing with TK. Whenever you call a function with bind, it passes in a variable. And this variable is like your event, which is essentially like what just happened to call the method. So if you click on the screen, like it'll pass through the click and the coordinates of your mouse and, and all that stuff. We don't really need any of that information, but we have to put it otherwise it'll give us an error. Um, and then we're gonna do uh, this thing, but instead we're gonna do it for all these guys. And this is gonna be right, this is gonna be left, this is gonna be down. And up, <coughs> what do we want to do when up happens? We want to do y equals y plus 1. We want to do x equals x plus 1. We want to do x equals x minus 1. And we want to do y equals y minus 1. Also, we want to call print board again, just because uh, we're moving the y value, but that doesn't mean anything. We have to actually re-update the board and then re-push it back to our screen. Otherwise, nothing's gonna change. Your Y value might change, but what you're looking at is not gonna change. And so, this should work, you'd think, but you're gonna get an error, and I'll explain why. Right here. So these variables are being called before you're referencing them, which is like, why? Why would that be happening? You know, you have Y right here. So your Y and X variable are actually only created outside of all these functions like here 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 it's not actually created inside this function and so when you call y equals y plus one it tries to create a new variable y equal to y plus one and it's like well i don't know what y is so i can't add one to y so we're going to give an error so if i use this keyword right here global y that basically says, let's take this y value that is already created, th this y value, right? And let's use that here, this value, and use it in here for this, you know, for, for everything inside this function, instead of trying to create a new y value. So I have to do that with x, I have to do that with all of these. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm a little sick, but, you know, got to crank these videos out. So we've got, now we've got these global values. We've run it again, and here's a moment of truth. Bam, your player is moving. But one thing you'll notice is it's moving backwards. When I press W, it's moving down. When I press S, it's moving up. And that's kind of odd, so let's go take a look at the up and down. And what you'll notice, <coughs> what you'll notice here is that while you are setting it to Y plus one, which you think is correct, it's actually wrong. Okay, so another voice over here, guys. Basically, the reason that it works backwards is because at the very top of your board, you're at the zeroth row. Because when i equals to y, you're printing your first row if i is zero. That means you're printing the top of your board when y is zero. So to make your character move up on the board, you want to make it so that your y value is closer to zero. So you want to subtract one instead of adding one. So essentially, it's backwards from what you think it would be. So now it's working perfectly. So we're already kind of getting into a long video. Um, so I think I might just end it here. And in the next video, we're going to start implementing some terrain. Uh, maybe like mountains that you can't walk through or some enemies and loot. And we're also going to make it so you can't just walk off the board, which is pretty simple. And you guys might be able to figure that out on your own. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.